Hi, I'm Barb Hikes, and on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Metropolitan Columbus, I'd like to introduce Emmy Award-winning journalist Maria Anahosa. Maria recently helped us to celebrate two very important events, the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment and the 100th anniversary of the formation of the League of Women Voters. Hello, everyone. Oh, wow, I just wish I could be with you. You have no idea how much I was looking forward to being with you in Columbus, in the all-important state of Ohio. So, that will be to come. And that will be when I come and I'll be able to hug each of one of you because actually for me, hugging is very important. Um, we have lost a lot of things in this moment of living and surviving through this pandemic. Uh, I actually am a survivor of COVID-19. Um, I had it. And so I give thanks every day that I was able to beat this virus. Um, and I credit just being strong and healthy. So my message about that is that we are all taking on a lot of battles. Women in this country are taking on a lot of battles. And the first thing we have to do when we wake up in the morning is to take care of ourselves so we can take on all of these battles. A hundred years ago, when, when the celebration of the passage of the 19th Amendment was underway, we probably lost a lot of compañeras because they gave too much. They gave, they gave everything. They maybe lost their families, their relationships. This was very radical what they were doing. But we know that they were true American women, independent, with a full heart, in this case, not self-interested at all, interested in the community. And so as we think about surviving in this pandemic, it is about community. You hear a siren. We're right here in New York City. This is still one of the epicenters of the pandemic and sirens are a part of our life. It's quiet in the city, but we hear sirens. And so for everybody who has survived, I'm so glad. And for those of us who have lost friends and family, I'm so sad. Remember how we thought it couldn't get any worse? It has gotten worse. And so we have no choice. What are we gonna do? Cross our arms and just say, well, it's gotten so bad, I'm not gonna do anything at all? I wasn't born in this country. I was born in Mexico. And so, when I came to this country, there's a whole story of what happened to me. In fact, um, it's in my book. It's called Once I Was You, a memoir of love and hate in a tour in America that comes out um, September 15th of 2020. <clears throat> and in this book, it turns out that, you know, I didn't know this until just very recently, that in fact, I was one of those children that they wanted to take away from their parents as we crossed into the United States. So there is a lot of shared common history that we have as Americans. And now we have survived a pandemic together. And it's not about going back to normal. It's about reimagining, recreating, and not rebuilding just but revolutionizing in many ways. So yeah, we have a lot on our plates. This is tiring. The women who were fighting a year ago, a hundred years ago, they were tired and they still did this. So <clears throat> the legacy of the women who were fighting a hundred years ago is really, it didn't stop just with the passage that we realized that then, <clears throat> it, along with black men and women, we understood that our power was related to their 
access to power. To me, democracy, because I wasn't able to vote because I was an immigrant, democracy was about using our bodies to manifest what we wanted. So as a child, my mother, also born in Mexico, uh, took all of us kids to a civil rights demonstration on the south side of Chicago. So when Dolores Huerta talks to me about people power, that's what we're talking about. And we have to figure that out post pandemic. What does that look like? But if New York City is smart enough to be able to shut down into silence for at this point, more than a hundred days, then we together, the women can certainly imagine how we do public protest in a way that is safe and communicates our message. And I don't know what that looks like because I'm not an organizer and I'm not an activist. I'm a journalist and I'm an American citizen and I'm a woman who is engaged. But I figure, we can figure out what that looks like. It is a new challenge for us in this moment to redefine how the civil rights battle looks in a post-pandemic reality. But we're not going to give up. We may be tired, we may be scared, but we are not going to give up. Certainly the youthful generation that has lived through this and that has seen and heard people talking about this person or that person who passed away every single morning. At least in my household, it's been like that. That generation is not gonna forget. Maybe they don't become active right now or in a year, but they will. Because what we've lived through is unforgettable and unforgivable. And now I'm speaking directly to the people, the women, and the people who identify as women in the state of Ohio, the most important state. That's why I'm so sad I can't be with you. To me, Ohio runs everything. So I'm sorry to put more pressure on your shoulders, mis compañeras of Ohio, but I am. It is your state that will determine what our future looks like. Your state. I know you're tired. I know it feels overwhelming. I know it feels like you don't have all the answers, but you know what? You have more answers than you think. What surprises me is that as I traveled, because of course right now I'm not traveling, that people would always say to me, what do you think we should do? I have an audience of 500 people in whatever state, from Nevada to Nebraska. And they would say, what do you think we should do? And my response always was, you know, when we think of great leaders in our history, like Harriet Tubman or Frederick Douglass or Martin Luther King or Cesar Chavez, um, or even Gloria Steinem, We think, well, they knew what they were doing, right? They had it figured out. They didn't know. They're just like us. But they're moving forward every day. That's what's truly American. I've thought about this a lot, you know, because there's been a lot of consternation living through this pandemic and just you know, and especially in New York and what, 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 you know, those of us who stayed in the city and who have lived through being the epicenter, you know, and it is, you know, and I'm surrounded, I have a statue of Harriet Tubman <clears throat> very close to me and I go there to get motivated because she had these liberation dreams and you have to continue in her legacy to have those liber- liberation dreams dreams. We're going to have to figure out how we don't lose our democracy. You know how much it's under threat. You can feel it. 
So I think it's actually more important that we're very honest with each other about how under threat it is, as opposed to, um, you know, the way we kind of want to think, which is everything's going to be okay. It's always been okay. No, it's not going to be okay unless we make it okay. So acknowledging the amount of threat that we're facing is the first step to how do we come up with an answer. And I believe that you're gonna come up with answers. We need you to come up with answers for how, how it happens in Ohio. To me, one of the legacies of, of the hundred years is we have to see ourselves in each other. So what is the future work of the League of Women Voters of Metropolitan Columbus? It is to open your eyes and see the new voters all around you. I am amazed at how diverse Ohio is. I'm not amazed. I love it. And when I go to Ohio, that's what I see. What I see is, wow, Ohio is like really representing. It really represents who we are, this state. It represents the future. And people that I speak to are like, oh my God, Puerto Rican voters in Cleveland, so important. They've been there for decades. Oh, Mexicans, Mexican Americans in, in Southern Ohio, been there for decades. African Americans in Cleveland, Arab Americans. So the push for you is to actually see that as your future, not as a project to do, but rather as your organic future of the League of Women Voters of Metropolitan Columbus. So yes, our democracy is under threat. We have to take it seriously. I think that's the most important thing we have to say. We are trying to save our democracy. We are living in a moment where the teetering of authoritarianism or already teetered into. And so this is hard, right? We have to speak from our hearts because we have family and friends who maybe um, are um, okay with what's happening. It's not okay when our de democracy is disrespected and when women are disrespected. And so, like we have done here in New York, where we got really smart and tough, is, as my daughter says, um, we had to grow up really fast. We had to stop acting like children. And that's why New York, in many ways, is a model for the rest of the country now, as survivors, as who took it seriously. And so, the League of Women Voters has always taken our voting rights seriously. This is a time for you to expand your message. Don't assume you already have an audience. Grow your audience. There are so many people who do not know about you and they need to know. I'm one of the lucky ones. I knew about you since I was a kid because I was a child of the civil rights era. Get your name out there everywhere. We need you. Thank you so much for all of the work that you do on behalf of all of us and the rest of the country. Thank you for what you do in Columbus, in Ohio. It means the world to us. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see all of you in person. Please join us now as we continue the work started so long ago. Join us to advance democracy by working together to bring equality and justice to all people of all races, creeds, nationalities, sexual orientations, and gender identities. You can learn more about the League of Women Voters at www.lwvcols.org.